What's up everyone? So this piece right here, I created with the idea of recreating one of my earliest kinetic sculptures, the Rose on Gear piece, in a form that you guys could download and 3D print at home. So in the last video, I explained how to assemble this thing. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the design process behind this and the steps that I took to get from here to this. I'm Jay, this is JBV Creative. Let's create. So I wanted to recreate this piece for a while, but with Mother's Day around the corner, I didn't have a gift planned out. I figured now would be the perfect time to do this. At the beginning of any project, I normally pick a few constraints that I want to follow. So for this one, there is a couple of very clear constraints. I wanted this to be done before Mother's Day, so it had to be simple, but I also wanted to be elegant because it's a gift. The next constraint is, for whatever reason, I envisioned this rose moving on the same axle as this gear in opposite directions. So that was another constraint. And then the third one was the whole thing had to be 3D printable and not require any additional tools. So with that in mind, the first thing I decided to do was figure out what mechanism I wanted to use to get the rows in this gear spinning coaxially. So I fired up the old YouTubes and I did a search for coaxial opposing motion mechanism, something along those lines. And what came up was one of my favorite mechanism sites, T-Fang something something something. Check them out. It's got everything, literally everything that you can think of. I quickly noticed that there's many different ways to achieve this motion. I almost got carried away because I saw this mechanism, which is so awesome, but I had to pull myself back into wanting to do this in a simple and elegant way. So I decided to go with a more basic gear setup and I decided to worry about sprucing up the aesthetics rather than trying to create a very complicated mechanism, which I do have a tendency to get a little carried away with sometimes. Note the hands up project or the jive bot project. So the way this mechanism works is it uses the basic principle of gears where when you have an even chain of gears, the gears on the ends of the chain move in opposing directions. And when you have an odd chain of gears, the gears on the end move in the same direction. If I put the big gear on an even gear chain, and put the rows on an odd gear chain, then the two would be moving in opposite rotations and this would achieve the look I'm going for. The other thing that I wanted to do was make it all run off of one crank. So I realized that I could just connect both gear chains to the same crank and that would achieve that goal. The funny thing is I actually screwed this up because I was thinking about the aesthetics and thought it'd be cool to have three gears fitting exactly in the same distance as this one big gear. I had the whole thing printed, assembled, and I started cranking it and both the rows and the big gear were moving in the same direction. So I was obviously wrong. Luckily I was working in multiples of 16. So these small gears are 16 teeth. So I was able to swap the two 16 tooth gears for the 32 tooth gear that you see here. And it was a really easy fix that didn't change any of the gear ratios that I was using. So now that the mechanism was figured out, it was time to decide on what the aesthetics were gonna be for this big gear. And normally I have a tendency to go with these straight spokes, but for this project, I wanted to choose something that kind of represented leaves because this is a flower. And I wanted this project to showcase natural beauty in contrast to a different kind of beauty, which I really enjoy, which is mechanical beauty. But it all tied together with this spoke design of these gears. So I went with my original vision, which was to have these spokes fanning out, sort of like tree branches. And I really liked the way that this aesthetic turned out. So I decided to use that for the other gears as well. So my original plan was to make this a wall mounted piece, which is this right here. But then I thought it'd be cool to give you guys the option of choosing whether or not you wanted it to be a surface or shelf mounted piece as well. And so that's where this came in. At first my original thought was to mount this vertically like this, but I wanted to go with something different from the JiveBot. So I thought maybe putting it horizontally and having the crank on the side would be cool. But then I was like, maybe I can just put this on a 45 degree angle and this is what I ended up with. 
So the last thing I had to do was figure out what the stand was gonna look like. And originally I had it looking a little bit like a PlayStation controller and it just wasn't really working. But then I thought maybe I can use the same aesthetic from the gears in the stand and then this is what I ended up with, which I love. I'm so happy with the way that this whole project came together. It looks great on its own without any movement. And then just the fact that you can crank it and get a cool movement out of it just makes it even more of a bonus for me. So a lot of you guys have been asking for me to explain my creative process and it's been a challenge for me to figure out how to do this because it's something that I just do, but I'm going to work on making more videos like this, explaining how these things come to life. And I'd love to hear your feedback. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, things that I could explain better, please let me know in the comments below and I'm gonna work those into my future videos. Thanks again guys, and I'll see you in the next one.